there's even more that we can say about the system, but to do so, we need to introduce a new mathematical tool called a Poincaré or recurrence map. In the xy plane of the restricted problem, we still have a four-dimensional phase space. That is, we have the coordinates x, y, and their derivatives x dot and y dot that describe the full system. We cannot easily visualize four-dimensional structure, and so we would like to reduce this problem a bit, which we can do because we do have a conserved quantity in the form of a Jacobi constant, which gives us a relationship between x, y, x dot, and y dot. We can write x dot squared plus y dot squared over 2 plus our modified potential u as a function of x, y for in-plane solutions, where z is equal to 0, is equal to the Jacobi constant c. And we can solve this, for example, for y dot to write, that is, y dot is equal to plus or minus the square root of twice c minus u minus x dot squared. And so we are now down to just three independent variables, x, y, and x dot. We now define a Poincaré section, which is a lower dimensional subspace. For example, let's just use the x, x dot plane. We are interested in the intersections of our trajectory with this space for some specific condition. And we're going to consider specifically the intersections of the trajectories of our system with this x, x dot plane at y equal to zero with y dot being strictly negative. So we are very, very strictly constraining the specific points that we're going to plot. We are going to propagate the trajectories of our system forward, and any time they match these conditions, where they're crossing the x, x dot plane with y equal to zero and y dot being negative, we are going to plot a point. If we generate this plot, what we will get is a Poincaré map, also known as a first recurrence map. The utility of these maps is that they preserve the properties of periodic and quasi-periodic orbits. The recurrence map is itself a discrete dynamical system. The stability of the orbits in the full system is very closely linked to the stability of fixed points in this map. So let's look at some specific examples of how this works. We are going to be looking at the Earth-Moon system, which has a mu star value of about 1 over 82.3. Here's and yet another rendering of the hill curves of this system. Here's the Earth, here's the Moon, and there are all of the Lagrange points. We can use our previously derived equations to figure out the characteristics of the system, and in particular, some bounding values for the Jacobi constant. We define these functions, which allow us to calculate the Jacobi constant of L4 and L5 as negative 1.4940 in our canonical unit set. And remember, this is the largest of all of the Jacobi constants for all of the Lagrange points. And similarly, we can find the Jacobi constant of L2 as negative 1.5861, which you will recall is an intermediate value for the on-axis Lagrange points. The value for L1 is the lowest of all of them, and it sits at negative 1.5942. So this will give some context for the numbers that we are about to present. So we're going to start by looking at the recurrence map for a system that has an initial position of x0 equal to 0 0.0935, and a Jacobi constant value of negative five. This Jacobi constant value is much smaller than those that we just saw for all of the Lagrange points. And you'll recall in our canonical unit set, this means that we are initializing our test particle very near the first primary, very near the very center of the system, which also is very near the larger of the two masses, which in this case is the Earth. So essentially what we're setting up is kind of a medium-sized Earth orbit it's not going to be very energetic, so it's going to be fairly nearly circular. And so what we would expect is that we would have an orbit that is basically just an orbit around the Earth being perturbed by the Moon. And this is borne out in the recurrence map, which shows us essentially a single spot. So what does this mean? This means that our trajectory crosses the Poincaré section, the subdimensional space of the Poincaré map, that is just the x, x dot plane, essentially in the same exact location every time y equals zero with a negative value of y dot. Fixed points in the recurrence map mean fully periodic orbits. 
if you squint at this or you zoom in on the generated figure, you'll see that there's not actually an isolated point. There's actually a very, very tight locus of points. And that has to do partially with the fact that we're evaluating the full nonlinear set of equations, which means that we actually do get perturbations in the moon. And some of that is numerical error due to the numerical integration that's being used to generate this. In essence, the recurrence map is predicting that we should see very, very periodic behavior. So let's do the integration and check. So we're going to animate the results of the numerical integration of the system with the same initial conditions, x naught at 0 0.0935 and a C value of negative five. And what you're seeing here on the left-hand side is a view of the animation in the rotating frame with the various contours representing the contours of the Jacobi constant for the associated Lagrange points. So these are for L4 and L5, and this big outside contour is for the L2 value. And here on the right-hand side, you see the exact same thing, but in the inertial frame. The red points are the Earth and the Moon, and so you can see them orbiting their common center of mass, and the blue point is our test particle. And as predicted by our understanding of the initial conditions and what we saw in the recurrence map, we effectively have a fully periodic orbit. We see minor variations in the semi-major axis of the orbit. You can see that it's not tracing the same curve, but going in and out. And these are actually exactly predicted by the perturbation theory that we are going to build for external third body perturbers. For now, we can see that our recurrence map told us exactly what we were going to see here. So let's look at another example. In this case, we are going to start x naught at point one, so still quite near the more massive of the two primaries, near the Earth, but a little bit further out. And our C value is going to be negative 1.586, which you will recall is exactly the Jacobi constant of L2. So we're setting up a near Earth orbit that is very energetic, which means that it's going to be much more eccentric now, and we expect significantly more perturbations due to the moon. And what the recurrence map is showing us now is not isolated points, but rather elongated extended regions. We can see, for example, here, this is a, if you zoom in, is a closed region. Similarly, these regions here, and the same thing on the other side of the plane, closed elongated regions or closed extended regions in a recurrence map indicate quasi-periodicity. You're not quite coming back to exactly the same point on each orbit, but you're coming back into the vicinity of that same point. And that is exactly the description of quasi-periodic behavior. So let's set this up and see what it looks like. We now set x naught to be 0.1. And in this code, the default C value is the L2 value. So we just don't enter anything for that. And when we animate, what we now see is significantly more interesting behavior. In the rotating frame, we see the contours doing their job. They're behaving as if they are boundaries in space that the particle cannot cross through. In the inertial frame, we have also what we predicted. We have a highly eccentric orbit that is interacting significantly with the moon and therefore being perturbed significantly. And so its period is now actively changing and we have quasi-periodic behavior. We are not repeating the same cycle, but we are repeating a cycle that is quite similar. Again, we see the exact same thing in the rotating frame where this pattern keeps clocking around. If we let this go for longer, then we would actually expect to see the argument of periapsis of this orbit to continuously rotate through a full 360 degrees. Next, we're going to consider a case where x is equal to 0 0.18, and c is again set to that negative 1.586 value, which corresponds to the L2 Jacobi constant. And now we get something completely different. We get a lot of individual points, and we, but we seem to be getting extended regions of them. And these are known as dense regions in the recurrence map. And these are a marker for chaotic behavior, for completely non-periodic and not even quasi-periodic behavior. This means that on every orbit, your particle is crossing the Poincaré section at a different place, and it's moving around. And this means that really interesting things can start to happen. You also note that we have density points both around the location of M1 and around the location of M2. And so what this indicates is that we should expect our particle to be able to orbit both the Earth and the Moon throughout this trajectory. Let's see if that prediction is correct. We set up our initial conditions using the default C value for the L2 point, and we animate. And what we see now is that we have a very large eccentric orbit around the Earth that came into very close proximity 
with the moon, which caused significant perturbations. And now the orbit is being heavily modified. And now the particle has actually been captured by the moon, but only temporarily. It then returns to orbiting the Earth but with its eccentricity vector rotated by almost 180 degrees. And this is actually something that we can take advantage of in orbital design. If we ever need to significantly change our orbital plane to rotate the eccentricity direction or do other massive maneuvers, we can do this very cheaply in the sense of using very little fuel if we have a third body handy. And this is actually something that is used extensively in the design of moon tours for the moon systems of gas giants, such as Jupiter and Saturn. Over on the left-hand side, looking at the trace of the trajectory, we see the same thing. We were always bounded by the L2 contour, but we were able to pass through the L1 point because L2 has a higher C value than L1 and temporarily be bounded by the contour here, but we could not pass through L2 because we did not have a sufficiently high Jacobi constant. We could, go, on the other hand, go back into the inner system and resume our orbit around the Earth. The final case to consider is starting out in the vicinity of the Moon using an initial x naught of 0.9 and still using that same L2 Jacobi constant value. And what's predicted here is this long closed contour representing quasi periodic motion in the Moon vicinity of the Moon. And this makes perfect sense because the Earth is so much larger than the Moon the Earth will always be a very significant perturber. And so we would expect very significant perturbations leading to quasi-periodic behavior. However, we know that it is possible to remain in lunar orbit. We've put spacecraft in lunar orbit for extended periods. And so this is a representative case of that kind of motion. Let's see what the trajectory looks like. We animate, and there we go. You see that we have constant quasi-periodic motion around the moon. And we see this both in the inertial frame and in the rotating frame, where we have quasi sinusoidal motion about the moon's arc in the inertial frame, and that leads to this kind of spirograph pattern in the rotating frame, all completely bounded by the L2 Jacobi constant contour. So we've now seen that Poincare maps are an incredibly useful diagnostic tool for the behavior of these orbits, and they can actually be used as a design tool for trajectory design we can actually select specific structures from various recurrence maps that match the desired behavior of various orbits. We can also use multiple Poincaré sections to help identify other classes of stable orbits that we might be interested in. These are some really great figures from this paper by Ege Coleman uh, from 2012. And these help classify the various known structures about the on-axis Lagrange points. So this is specifically the L2 point. So here we have the Earth, and here we have the L2 point. This is all in the rotating frame. Here we have the moon's orbit for reference. And plotted here are three periodic orbits. The horizontal Lyapunov orbit that is fully in the ecliptic plane. There is the vertical Lyapunov orbit. And then finally, there is a halo orbit, which is a really cool three-dimensional structure that is fully periodic in the restricted three-body problem. And there are actually many operating spacecraft on halo-like orbits around the Sun-Earth L2 point as we speak. In fact, as I'm recording this, the James Webb Space Telescope is on its way towards an L2 orbit. And it is going to actually be targeting a Lisa Zhu type orbit, such as the ones that we previously looked at. And James Webb is going to use periodic correction burns to ensure that it remains in the vicinity of the L2 point and maintains a nearly periodic orbit. Future observatories, including the Nancy Grace Roman Space Telescope, are targeting very much halo-like orbits, because this is a really good position to be in, because the Earth and the Sun are always to one side of you. So if you're interested in looking out into space, being in a stable structure about the L2 point is a really great place to be. We also have the Lisa Zhu families that we've previously looked at, as well as the quasi-halo families, which are analogous quasi-periodic structures in the same space. And the methodology behind this work was the use of multiple Poincaré sections. And here is a cut through the ecliptic plane showing a projection of all of these different families. So you see that these quasi-periodic structures form closed contours, as we've already seen in our own recurrence maps. And at the center of each of these contours, 
is a single fixed point representing a fully periodic structure, such as the vertical Lyapunov here and the halo orbit here. And you can get a northern halo and a southern halo surrounded by quasi-halo, quasi-periodic orbits. This is all bounded by the horizontal Lyapunov, which lies entirely in the orbital plane of the Earth and the Sun.